team. He didn't get and answers. The large so we're not and, and, and has absolutely nothing to do it's with the United order, Kingdom's order, right, promotion stop, of Scotland I, internationally. Order. And we've also had an, an engaged. You'll find there's one or two of these uh, little excursions between uh, Oh Douglas Dross and uh, Pete Wishard. Uh, anyway, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Now, as you can tell, that's in the Scottish Affairs Committee, and that was on the Monday, the 20th of March, 2023. And uh, the witness was Angus Robertson, Cabinet Secretary for the Constitution of External Affairs and Culture for the Scottish Government. And the subject of the matter was promoting Scotland internationally. Something that our Douglas Dross seemed to struggle to grasp in his questioning, as you'll find out, because it was more of a mixture of Inspector Clouseau with a bit of Inspector Gadget thrown in. Mr Robertson, uh, clearly um, international governments will be interested in the Government of Scotland. It's currently run by the SNP, who's going through uh, a, a very interesting leadership uh, battle at the moment. Uh, yesterday, your party president and chief executive said the party was in a tremendous mess. Today, Nicola Sturgeon said the SNP is not in a mess. Who do you agree with? No, uh, okay, right. Oh, right. Well, I'm, wait, sorry, so, sorry Chair. I, to discuss Scotland, promoting Scotland internationally, the internal arrangements of the Scottish National Party are not relevant to that. So could you please ask a question? I, I, will, related I, will, rephrase, I will rephrase my question. You will have to advise um, ambassadors and others from international countries the political situation in Scotland. When you are doing that, would you agree with Nicola Sturgeon, who says the current governing party of Scotland is not in a mess, or with your chief executive of the SNP, who says it's in a tremendous mess? Um, I'm just good to take that note. You will have to advise foreign governments. Um, um, so I'd, I've, I've not spoken into, to any foreign governments. Who, who, who about do you agree with, though? Um, I think the, the Scottish National Party is going through a leadership contest where different people have different things to say, although um, there's plenty that could be say about that, to be said about that, but I'm, I'm not sure what that has to do with the United well, Kingdom I, I government's I have, order, promotion. Order, right. It's got absolutely nothing to do with promoting Scotland internationally. We've had an answer. Now, could we please move on to yeah. with the precious little time with the Cabinet Secretary. We're trying to find out what the views about Scotland being promoted internationally. Could we please stick well, to that? I, I prefaced my question twice, and I think it's a relevant question, but the Cabinet Secretary is unwilling to answer, and I think people will reach their own conclusions about your chairing yeah. uh, of that uh, part of this session. Uh, Mr Robertson, you're commonly referred to in the Scottish media as air miles <coughs> you're commonly referred to in the Scottish media as air miles Angus. Do you think at the moment the amount of international travel that you do and the cost to the Scottish taxpayer is seen as a priority when there are many other issues that the government should be focusing on and putting very valuable taxpayers' money towards? So I, I see the promotion of Scotland internationally as a matter that creates jobs, that creates investment, that supports and promotes tourism and culture. And uh, I and my office decline more invitations to attend international events than I actually do. Do I think that the travel that I and other Scottish government ministers undertake in pursuit of the promotion of all of those advantageous um, uh, elements that a government is actually supposed to deliver on is a good thing. Uh, I think we provide good value for that. Uh, and I, there are a great many more things that I could visit and places that I could go that I've uh, yet been to. But my, my job description is Cabinet Secretary for External Affairs, and the clue's in the name. So my job is, is there to promote Scotland internationally, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. That's what your job description says. My mm. question was actually, what do you think of the perception of your constituents in Edinburgh Central, mine in the, the Highlands and Islands, about that being the focus and taxpayers' money going in that at the moment, when there are critical issues that, that your government uh, is seeking to, to deal with, in the challenge, sure. in the NHS, in education, etc.? I'm sure if they didn't want me to do that, they wouldn't have elected me in an essay. They, they, gain from they, they didn't elect may you I, as... I, well, may, sorry, may I finish the question, uh, Convener? Not if we're going to mislead, Order, because right. he was not sorry. elected in that position. Can, like, how this works is you ask a question, we get... You, you don't let the question be asked. If you're not happy with the answer, you can, you can ask your question again. I will. Please. Thank you. Well, if I can move on. You mentioned um, Minister Offord's comments about your meeting with the Icelandic Prime Minister. Did you or did you not speak about independence with the She Icelandic? asked me about independence. So you spoke about independence? Prime Minister of Iceland asked me about independence. So you spoke about independence? I answered her questions, yeah. So therefore, 
Minister Offord was correct in what he said uh, about the discussions that you had had with international uh, counterparts and governments on Scottish independence? Because you said um, you never put independence on the agenda, but that doesn't mean you never speak about independence at these meetings. I'm, I'm very polite and I answer people's questions, Mr Ross, as I'm trying to do to you. So I'm just checking. When you said to this committee that you never put independence on the agenda, that doesn't mean that you never speak about independence in these meetings. If, if people are keen to ask me questions, I'm always happy to answer, Mr Ross. Well, it would be interesting if you had answered about the current political state uh, of Scotland, but we're not allowed to ask about that. So you can confirm that you did speak uh, about independence with the Icelandic Prime Minister uh, in the October meeting of the Arctic Council. Sir, I, I refer to the answer he gave a moment ago. Yes or no? It's, it's easy. I did say yes. yes I was asked a question and I answered it. Uh -huh. And then, in which, which, sorry, sorry, which, as I've already mentioned, would be subject of a report by the by the UK ambassador to Iceland that was in the meeting yeah. with me. I was just going to come on to that because I, I noted down in response to the chair, you said that the uh, ambassador or any other diplomat has never raised concerns about you speaking about independence. In these meetings, but would you agree with me that diplomats would never do that? They tend to sit very poker-faced, as Mr. Whiteman is doing throughout this session, and would never interject in that way. It may come out uh, in a, a readout of that meeting following. They would never. Could you imagine uh, a diplomat ever interjecting between two politicians in that way? Um, I, I don't think that's how it would work. If there was ever, if there was ever an issue that needed to be raised, I, I would never presume that a British diplomat would not uh, choose a diplomatic way in making their, their views known, this, known on, on the subject, but yeah. never had. Can I ask on the, the British diplomats, do you always refer to them as British diplomats, British ambassadors? Do you ever use colloquialisms when you're referring to them in these meetings? What colloquialisms well, I, would I'm those be? Asking, would you ever call them anything other than the British a diplomat, the representatives of the, the British or the UK government. Have you ever used any freeze uh, other than that? What, what would those be, Mr I'm Ross? Asking you, have you ever used I'm anything other than that? Not a, I'm not aware of what phrase you have in mind, Mr Ross. I'm a, well, the phrase I'm asking you, do you use, do you always 100% refer to them as British ambassadors, British di diplomats, or have you ever called them anything else? I can, I can recall a, a very good interaction I had with the, um, the French Europe minister with two colleagues from the British embassy where I was where I was lording and praising their abilities as British diplomats working in the British Embassy um, to be able to help support British ministers of the British government whilst at the same time doing so for ministers of the Scottish government and work to different ministerial directions. I think it was very clear then, I think, and pretty clear in other, every other interaction that I have. You'd never call them the, the English diplomats? No, I don't think so. Never. Think so. Just checking for this committee that you wouldn't mislead the committee deliberately. You've never called them the English diplomats. But British British diplomats, like British ser civil servants, are British um, diplomats or British civil servants. You've never called them in these meetings the English diplomats. I don't, I don't see why I would say that. It's, it's yes or no to that question. I have no recollection of ever saying such a thing. No, you've, you've never said it. Right, can we please move well, on? Yeah, yeah, I know we, but he's, he's answered about three well, times. He's, he's not actually. Uh, have you ever used misleading statistics when you've been representing the Scottish Government abroad? I think what Mr Ross is referring to are statistics that were used both by the United Kingdom Government and the Scottish Government in relation to renewable en energy potential. Um, which, have ever, which have which, which ever used them which, when you knew they were wrong? So I, I, I have been extremely careful that when I have become completely aware that statistics are out of date. They've been, uh, they've been updated. Um, they're no longer the best um, uh, statistics uh, to use. That, 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 that those are statistics that I, I don't use, and I sh should use the uh, the current statistics on. So things. Just on, on a timeline, uh, your department were told on the sixth of September uh, about a statistic: the twenty five percent potential renewables from Europe. This is this Order. is about this. No, no, chair. I cannot believe you're going to stop a, a politician. I cannot believe you're going to do this, Order. Chair. This is, this is incredible. If you're going to do what I think you're going to do, I wonder if you are following your duties as an impartial chair of this House. 
what I'm trying to do is try to conduct an inquiry into promoting well, Scotland let me ask the question. That question bears absolutely no relation unless you get some, some point of conclusion about it. Well, We're here with okay. the Cabinet Secretary. Right. Today so to the conclusion is that on the 4th of October, you spoke to governments uh, across Europe about a statistic you had been told on the 6th of September should not be used. Your department then went back to say the Cabinet Secretary, uh, we have a specific ask to include that uh, uh, figure in a statement. They were told minutes later that we don't have the evidence to back up that statement, therefore we advise against using it, but you used it at subsequent meetings. Why was that? So, convener, uh, you, you'll be aware Chair, that this is... This is Scottish this is I'm happy to be called anything. There's oh, a hope. Well, oh, oh, note for that. What I, what I want to do is try to ensure that everybody else gets an opportunity to ask questions about promoting Scotland internationally. If answers. you can answer that question as oh, briefly so and concisely as possible, then we could move on so to the inquiry. This matter has already been subject of a, a parliamentary statement in the Scottish Parliament and a significant number of written questions, and I'm happy to answer MSPs in the Scottish Parliament. I'm here to give evidence today in relation to the promotion of Scotland by the United Kingdom Government. The question. That, that is why I'm I'm here to give evidence, Mr. Convener. But, but the question, uh, Mr. Robertson, because I still have the floor at the moment, the question is the statistics you use when you're representing the Scottish Government abroad in Scotland's place internationally. And I think, finally, Chair, then, if you're going to try and bring this to a close, I, I think it's really important that we know about that timeline. Did you knowingly use a, a statistic when discussing this with foreign governments that you had been told was wrong, could not be proved? and had been asked not to include? Yes or no? So, convener, I, I refer to my previous answer, which is this has been subject to a parliamentary statement. He didn't get and answers there. So we are not and, and has absolutely nothing to do it's with the United order, Kingdom's order, right, promotion stop, of Scotland it's internationally. Order. Yeah, and we've also had a, a, engaged in a prolonged discussion about this with another Scottish Government Minister when he was here. So can we now please move on to promoting Scottish internationally? If you finish, but, we've got three colleagues. We've only got half an hour with the Cabinet Secretary. Can we move on? Well, I still have time compared to what you got at the start. I, I think it is really important, though. You said you've given uh, statements to the Scottish Parliament and answered questions about this. You'll also be aware that the press have said almost right. exclusively Order. that you refuse to well, answer. Why are you refusing to answer Order. to this committee as Order. well? We've been through this. We've yeah, dealt with we'll it. We've had it. About yes, we will have to have a discussion this, about this it. As well. Philippa Whitford, thank you. Sorry, just on a, a point of order then before we move to Philippa Whitford, can we ask that it to be noted that for the first time the Chair has prevented members asking witnesses uh, relevant questions to the inquiry and from getting answers? And I think this is something we will have to write to the witness about to get the answers in writing. Thank you. And we will indeed. Could we now move on to discussing the rest of the session on Scott, promoting Scotland internationally, which I'm sure Philippa Whitford will now do? Philippa. Now, Douglas Dross is one of them people who, let's be honest, for me, but the more serious he becomes, the more funny he is to me. I just find him hilariously funny when he tries to be serious because he clearly finds out everything far too seriously. And if he were questioning me, the more serious he become, the more I would just burst out laughing. And I also can imagine the more I burst out laughing and start falling off my seat in hysterics, the more annoyed he'd become because. Let's be honest, in my part, I find him a very unserious person. And as I was watching, I could think and I could imagine him in some social interaction. And he, you can imagine him trying to say a funny joke. He'd be so wired of the mark. At least five double-decker buses would be able to ride through it. And he would probably be the only one who, let's be honest, would find his own joke funny. And everybody was sat there going, hmm. huh? I don't get it. <laughs> also, his questioning as well was just weird, wasn't it? It was as if he was questioning a hardened criminal instead of a politician. I thought, why did he just go over there, just tie him up and get a couple of lamps straight in front of him, and give him give him the, the full treatment? He was just an absolute clown, wasn't he? Now, for all you know, you might find the interaction with Pete Wishard, he might have a point. You might disagree with Pete Wishard. I don't know. But all I'm saying is, let me know down below. And if you enjoyed the video, give it, give it a like. And also... I do cover these sort of things in uh, select committee meetings and sometimes stuff in the House of Commons, so subscribe. Now, come next week, things will be a little bit different because I've been 
tearing my way up and down these uh, select committee meetings over the last month or two ago, and I've still got to wait till September the nineteenth for a wet recess. So these this will be the last of the select committee meetings. I might try my dab hand a little bit, little bit of pitter patter of live streaming, just to get through get through till September the nineteenth. Then we'll be back to normal, and uh, I might book a couple of days off early before before recess get my channel all ready so all i'm saying is have a fantastic weekend my friends and take care